Good evening, this is Pamela, and you're listening to Watchmen on the Pod. We're going to continue in our book reading, The Warfare with Satan and the Way of Victory by Jesse Penn Lewis, and we are in Chapter 8, which is our final chapter. The Throne of Victory, Satan Under the Feet of the Believer. We have now traced the story of the translation of a soul out of the power of darkness into the kingdom of the sun. Through the gate of death into resurrection life, in union with the risen Lord, heard the call to arms and the putting on of the heavenly armor to meet the new tactics of the foe. When the believer emerges into the spiritual sphere and considered some of the wiles of the devil suited to the spirit-filled believer, in closing, we must see the way of victory and the place of authority over all the power of the enemy, which makes the redeemed one terrible as an army with banners to the foe. When the believer emerges into the spirit sphere on the resurrection side of the cross, he enters into conflict with the aerial hosts of darkness who swarm in the region immediately surrounding our planet. Here he needs the whole armor of God to encase and protect him. Also, we are taught that he has a place above them where he sits with Christ in his place of victory far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, where Satan and all his hosts are under his feet. United to the conqueror of Calvary, he sits and reigns with Christ in spirit, as he will do visibly to the world in the day when Christ shall appear in glory, and his victorious ones shall reign with him a thousand years. The call from heaven by the victorious Lord to his redeemed ones is a call to overcome as he overcame, and a promise that they who thus overcome shall sit with him in his throne, even as he sat down a victor over sin and death and hell on his father's throne. The believer is to enter into the victory of the victor over Calvary, where through death he destroyed him who had the power of death, that is the devil. On Calvary's cross, the God-man, beset with the powers and principalities of a darkness, stripped them off and triumphed them over them in his death, and ascending through their realm, passed to the throne, there to sit at the right hand of God, expecting until his enemies become his footstool. Stage after stage of the believer's progress from the cross to the throne is shown in the messages to the seven churches with the special rewards obtained at every stage. First, after emerging through the gate of the cross, comes, number one, life in union with the risen Lord. Two, victory over death in the path of tribulation. Three, a new nature and new character symbolized by the hidden manna and white stone. Four, authority over the nations and the reigning life. Five, the clothing with Christ as in white garments. Six, the life within the veil, seven, and then the throne life, victory with Christ in God. What now are the practical conditions for realizing and abiding in the place of victory far above all the principalities and powers? All conditions for knowing and retaining the place of power are wrapped up in one word, Calvary. The cross on Calvary's hill was the victor's throne over all the principalities and powers of hell for the God-man who triumphed there. And in heaven again the Lamb slain is seen to be in the midst of the throne. The altar and the throne are one. Neither can be divided from the other. The people, the believer can only know the throne of victory by complete submergence into the death of Christ on the cross. Calvary has freed all things from the prince of this world potentially. The triumph Lord on the throne now calls his church to enter into his death and his life and his throne life of victory. Let the believer who has been translated out of the power of darkness into the kingdom of the sun now yield to the Holy Ghost to be drawn into the death of Christ until in deepening conformity to his death he becomes assimilated to him in vital union, even to oneness with his melted and broken heart. 
Let the yielding one cry out to the Spirit day by day to fulfill in him the utmost victory of Calvary over sin and light and death. No. Over sin and self and death and hell. And he will then find the reigning life of Jesus manifested in him in ever increasing power over all things around him. While as in union with the reigning Lord, he will find his ascension power drawing him ever more and more with Christ into God. For abiding in the place of victory, Calvary again is the key. All the powers of hell will be delivered toward, will be directed toward drawing the soul out of its hiding place in Christ on the cross and the throne. Hence the endeavors of the adversary to arouse the workings of the life of nature in the believer or others around him. The death in Christ separates from the natural sphere of the earth, and the life union with Christ draws the soul into the supernatural sphere of the spirit. Victory over known sin is now a settled matter in the walk of the believer who has followed his Lord thus far. It is now the realm of the life of nature which offers the opportunity to the adversary for his devices. For the life which flows in us from the first Adam is a poison life and is the ground for the devil's workings. The life of the second Adam alone cannot offer material for the devices of the evil one. The cross of Calvary is the one safeguard and shudder, so to speak, between the believer united to Christ and the touch of the life of the earth. The serving power of the death of the cross is a continuous necessity if the soul is to abide with Christ in God, always bearing about the dying of Jesus. The cross serves the believer every moment from all that Christ died to free him from. It severs from sin and the desire for sin. It severs from the world and from the devil. And it severs from the life of the first Adam, which is the material for the devil to attack and work upon. The abiding and the severing death of the cross every moment is there for the supreme necessity for the soul who desires victory. And be it remembered, the severing of the cross is not an actual experience unless the will of the believer desires and consents to separate to separation in fact and practice. The cross only severs what we consent to part from. Here lies the fight of the adversary who seeks to throw upon the redeemed one apparent desires for things in the life of nature to cause him to descend from the plane of the spirit and of victory. But Calvary is victory, hidden from the foe and the death of him who conquered the devil by death, the believer is safe. And as he abides, he is led on day by day into fellowship with the Lamb slain, who is in the midst of the throne of God. Here Satan is under the feet of the victorious Lord, who now sends forth his own to loose other captives from their bonds. Now encased in Christ and wielding his authority, the reigning soul can command all the hosts of hell. As it is written, the spirits are subject unto you. Behold, I have given you authority to tread authority over all the power or authority of the enemy, and nothing shall in any wise hurt you. Here he that has begot, was begotten of God keepeth him, and the wicked one toucheth him not. May God lead every one of his children into the fullest victory of the cross, and thence to the throne, to overcome as the Lord Christ overcame, and reign in life with him here and beyond the veil unto the ages of ages. And that completes our reading of The Warfare with Satan and the Way of Victory by Jesse Penn. Lewis. All right, brothers and sisters, you know, it'd be worth a thing to go back and begin at the very first chapter and go all the way through until we get it deep within our hearts, deep within our souls, and we understand exactly who and what we are in Christ Jesus, you know, and who and what Jesus has done for us. I mean, really get that deep within so we'll understand. You know, we can only understand if we go to the Father and ask Him for wisdom, ask Him to fill us full of His Holy Spirit, who will give us the understanding because He is our teacher. All right, I'm going to let you go. I want you to keep your eyes on Jesus, your nose in the book, 
which is the word of God. And in that, the word of God, upon the tablets of your hearts, so you will not sin against God or be deceived. Until next time, I love each and every one of you. Goodbye.